Han Kids Hawkeye After Show. This series based on Marvel Comics superhero Hawkeye, centering on the adventures of young Avenger Kate M. Bishop, who took on the role after original Avenger Clint Barton. Hi, I'm Austin, and with me tonight, Daniel. And excited to be back and review the Hawkeye episodes, which we got two, which I was so excited about that we got two instead of one. So I'm happy to review the episodes today. Yes. Yeah, for sure. So before we dive into this, did you guys see the um, Spider-Man No Way Home trailers? Yes. 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 Oh my God. I'm excited. What do you guys think of that? I thought it was pretty. I was like not expecting that many villains to come out. Like, I, I'm honestly excited they revealed that many. We, we saw like Lizard, yeah, Sandman. Electro, we already kind of saw him before, but no, it was just awesome. It was really cool. I was like, yes, I can't wait. I'm still waiting, though. I know they're hiding Andrew Griff, like Garfield. I know. <laughs> yeah, the Brazilian trailer or whatever. Yeah. With the whole kick in the face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I kept watching this thing over and over again. I leaned in. I was like, <laughs> they edited it out. <laughs> yeah, TikTok's gone crazy right now for it. Um, oh, yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> as it to my attention, the tickets like only released today. I went on there to look at it. Um, like as soon as I got the notification from Regal, every ticket and like the next the first three days were like sold out. It was ridiculous. Wow, that movie COVID- is so high. Oh my gosh. And like COVID's prevented you know a lot of people from going back to like the theaters or like it's just waiting them. So I was like, ah, maybe like the first day. No, dude, like the entire weekend's gone. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so, if nothing else, this is going to be a really good movie. I, I don't think I remember something getting this hype since, like, what, Endgame? Yeah. Infinity War? <laughs> At least from the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Yeah, for sure. So, getting back to this show, uh, Hawkeye. You know, they released two episodes last Wednesday. A little late because of Thanksgiving, but, you know. Yeah. That's okay. So, yeah. What would you guys think of the episode? They were charming. I enjoyed them a lot. Like, I watched it with my family, so we were just, like, watching the episodes, and it was really fun. It, were, it was, like, it was funny. Like, I like the – it's kind of like a – well, they're not, like, father and daughter, but it kind of feels that way already. And Hawkeye showing the ropes. You know, we get to see. I really felt for Hawkeye, too. Like, the dude really can't get a time with his family. He just seemed like he was so done being in a <laughs> But the, I, I really liked him. What do you think, Aaron? Uh, I kind of feel like it was like a... Like most of the Disney Plus shows or superhero plus shows, trying to do that. Like it was like a slice of life. Like he's trying to enjoy the time with his family because you know he they've been gone and you know he. I'm assuming he hasn't told them about. Oh yeah, when you guys disappeared, I went on a murderous killing spree and I killed a lot of people out of grief. But now that he's got them back, he's trying to make up for lost time. And you know now he has to clean up the mess that. Kate has made so he's becoming this reluctant mentor figure but at the same time he's trying to kind of trying to cope with um the things he did as Ronan and also trying to cope with um Nat's death so there's a lot going on which which I like it also the the play the the play that they did with Hawkeye was watching this family was was hilarious and oh my gosh when he said Ant-Man wasn't there I just started <laughs> laughing but yeah, I really enjoyed the, the series so far. That was funny. That was, yeah. the, that was the best way to open it up. Just like a mm-hmm. musical on Broadway. It was called Rogers too. Mm-hmm. It literally looked like um, it had like the same format as the Hamilton poster. I think but that's what they brought and just drew inspiration from. Actually, I think that's what the director said. Like when they were in New York, they passed by like the Hamilton poster all the time and it was everywhere. So they're like, you know what? We should make one yeah. of our own. We should make Rogers the musical. 
<laughs> yeah, and kind of what you were hitting on, Aaron, too. Um, I looked it up. Apparently, the director released that the series takes place two years after the blip. So later than like everything else kind of seen so far. So there's been two years of him not being Ronan. So because I was kind of confused. I was like, if this has happened right after the blip, eh, blip, you know, it's pretty fast that, you know, he's already kind of myth. Oh yeah, I know that that was that was interesting too. I was surprised how like how big of a deal Ronan really was. Cause I was just like, mm-hmm. wow, like this dude really must have done some messed up stuff, considering how like crazy everybody went after Kate wearing it. So we're wearing the Ronan outfit. So I was like surprised. I was like, wow, I hope they get into what exactly Hawkeye did in that little ninja suit. I mean, yeah, I was on, I, you know, I had like a weird theory, kind of how like, you know, what if the Ronin suit actually was like, I don't know, crafted somewhere um, from like the Shang-Chi franchise or something, like some connections, I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So kind of hitting what you guys were hitting on with Rogers. What do you guys think of that? Like, just overall, like, did it seem weird or did it seem appropriate for the series? Or you want to see a little bit more, maybe? Uh, um, for me, yes, I'd love to see something like that again. I think it kind of added some form of realism to the um, Marvel Universe because you think about it. Um a company would try to monetize the Avengers with the and stuff. And, you know, titling, of course, Rogers after everything that's gone on with Captain America, especially with the uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier series. And it it, it was cool because, like, the people think of these crazy heroes. Oh, yeah, Thor, Iron Man, Hulk. And I've seen him dance on Broadway. And I was like, yeah. I paid to see that as it was, it was hilarious. <laughs> that was funny. Like just seeing I really just liked the fact that you got to see them watching it and then they just cut to all of their faces just like what am I watching? <laughs> I mean it was hilarious because like I mean I was watching with my family. We just thought it was funny just to see musical Avengers. I mean, you know, I can't, I wouldn't, I mean, if they wanted to make a whole movie about it, I'd go watch it. I, I can't make promises, but. Are a musical? Yeah, music, musical Avengers. And then you just see Hawkeye just out of it. He's like, wow, this is not exactly what happened, but okay. Yeah, no, it was, it was really entertaining, to be honest. Like, those were probably my favorite, like, couple minutes when they were showing that out of the entire like series so far just because of how how entertaining it is like because it kind of is what happened for the most part other than like ant-man they didn't dance and all that stuff but like it's more entertaining honestly than the actual avengers movie to be honest (laughs) they made a a song lyric after captain rogers best line i could do this all day yeah (laughs) that was great yeah you guys know like uh, you know, Kids Pop, right? Yes. So you know yes. how you have this like, really good song that's been out for a little bit, and then yeah. the Kids Pop version comes out, and it's just yeah. terrible, and you're like, what the heck? This is yeah. the Kids Pop version of the movie. <laughs> Personally, I entertained a little yeah. It entertained me a little bit more, but, you know, it it's the Kids Pop so version. It, was, it, it didn't make it out like that. Everyone was freaked out at the show. They're like... Yikes. Yeah, they even left early and everything. I'm like, wow. It must have not been that good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, moving on from that, um, what do you guys think of Kate Bishop so far? And, like, she's been introduced as kind of, like, training her entire life to be Hawkeye um, after the events of Avengers. Like, what do you guys think about that? Well, I really like Kate Bishop. Like, she's, I think she's funny. Like, she's, like, an interesting character. 
she's and I, I really like how they like really focused on her in the beginning too um we kind of got to see like her struggle and then tying her life with the first avengers movie was really cool I also like really how they like, I like how she's really, you know, I would say she's like flawed a lot, which I think is also really cool because it seems like she has a lot of growth and it seems like she's a more entertaining character that can watch more of. So I thought that was also really cool. And I like that decision Marvel made. Yeah, I, I agree. And also the thing that I, I realized while watching this series is that I realized that they're also, did, did anyone else notice that they were setting up the Young Avengers? Like there are a bunch of characters that you look around because I believe Kate Bishop has been a member of the quote unquote Young Avengers. And then um, Scarlet Witch's children, I believe they're also part of the team. And um, I actually looked this up, but uh, you guys remember Isaiah Bradley, right? Yeah. So. His, I don't know if it was his nephew or his grandson, but in the comics, he's uh, Isaiah Bradley's uh, nephew or grandson, I don't know which it is, but he's a superhero called Patriot. And he's kind of like a, he's kind of like Captain America. And also uh, Miss Marvel, um, the Kamala Khan version is also going to be introduced to MCU. And I think that that's cool. That they're bringing all these characters in. But um, back to Kate Bishop. I, I like how um, with this uh, new generation of heroes that's coming out, she was inspired by Hawkeye and also how they tied that scene together where he made that one shot that he didn't even know, it, but it saved her life and that inspired her to be stronger and train. And, and now she'll be the future Hawkeye, which I think is, I think is pretty cool. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's cool kind of seeing how, like, she's been training for it her entire life. And Clint's like, I don't care. Stay out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't beat that. Like, those are the most entertaining plot stories where it's like you got the annoying, like, little brat as you're like, be yeah. like, let me be like yeah. you. And you're like, dude, stay off me. Let me do, let me fix your yeah. mess. <laughs> Definitely like a father daughter kind of relationship. It's cool. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, you guys got any questions in particular? I don't want to take up all like the question time. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, I, oh wait, you want to go first? Well, I just thought it was interesting because like usually a lot of superhero movies, they don't like, they don't like to use a family asset as like tension for the story. So I thought this was really cool that they did that. And I was kind of curious what your guys' thoughts were on that. Yeah, I like the use of the family in it, for sure. Um, it kind of, like, makes it more relatable. Like, in my opinion, this is one of the more relatable shows. Yeah. Um, you can kind of control, like, to your aspect. Like, how do you deal with, you know, a new stepdad coming into your life when mm -hmm. you're kind of rejecting of that? And how do you deal with, like, missing out so much time on your kids? I'm not a dad. I don't really know. But, um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think I mean, it's... Cool. that he's he's trying to make up for lost time but at the same time even though he's he's quote unquote retired you know people are still recognizing him they still see him as a hero because like I think even if a superhero were to retire you can never really forget what they did and all the sacrifices that they had things they had to give up to save you and I think that he, him just walking down the street alone is just a symbol of what he used to be and still is, which is a hero. But at the same time, he's like, listen, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a superhero, but now I just want to be a super dad and hang out with my kids. But now, you know, he has to take care of Kate. And I think the series is just going to end with him, Kate, and his family just eating Christmas dinner. And they're like, so how'd you meet her? He's just like, well. <laughs> it's one story. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Real quick, I want to add something to what I said. Mm -hmm. Um, like my dad's in the military, so I kind of know about the in and out kind of thing. Uh -huh. I find it just a little unreal unrealistic how like adaptive they are to like their dad being back out of nowhere. I know they they didn't really face it too much because they were the ones blipped away for two years. Yeah. 
But, you know, I understand, like, hanging out with them and making up that lost time. So I thought that was kind of a cool aspect they added to it, even if it was for, like, a day. And then Kate came and ruined it. <laughs> Sorry, Daniel, you can go on. Oh, no, I mean, that, that, that I kind of, I get that, because it was, like, I, I was, like, especially when Hawkeye left again, where he's like, okay, you guys got to go. Like, they seemed pretty, like, oh, yeah, let's get it. Let's go back home. The daughter was a little reluctant, but she could have been more reluctant. I mean, there. When I think about, it, they went through a lot, and I don't really know how much Hawkeye was really there. And I'm sure since they were living in like a safe house in Age of Ultron, they probably moved a lot. I, I could that could be an assumption, but I don't know. So it's something to think about. But on a side note, what do you guys think of the dog? <laughs> uh, One eye dog. <laughs> Oh my god! Isn't his oh. name in the comics Lucky? Yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's Lucky. Yeah, I like as, him. Yeah, as, as soon as I saw that dog, I'm like, this should be Nick Fury's dog, 100. <laughs> percent Look, I just looked at him. I just imagine Nick Fury sitting in the chair, like the head of shield, like Lucky, and then the, the dog would just walk over and sit next to him. <laughs> I thought it was like the. Like, cause I like that how the dog was just there, going mm-hmm. around the story, and like I thought the like interaction with the dog and Kate was probably like it was kind of gold for me, cause it was just like how would you react to a dog with like one eye like that, and it looks like it's winking at you. <laughs> like, how would you react towards that? <laughs> I was like, she she was pretty level-headed i mean like if a dog just stared at me with one eye i'd be like yo um interesting oh yeah, and, for sure. uh, one more thing um do you guys think yelena will appear in the series because i was i was thinking may- maybe she will i think she's been confirmed for at least one episode oh she's been confirmed okay you're, you're yeah i'm pretty sure i heard something on like that. yelena uh wait what'd you say you're gonna have to educate me on yelena uh yeah so she's the sister of black widow from the first black widow oh my god (laughs) silly goose (laughs) for viewers out there it's like the blonde girl personally (laughs) the marvel actress out there other than elizabeth olsen but um she was the kind of the russian one um (laughs) that that makes a lot yeah very hot very hot (laughs) <laughs> yes. No, it, it's because I'm always memorizing people because of pictures, you know. <laughs> I don't memorize the name. <laughs> the, new, the new Marvel era, I'm still learning. I, I only remember Shang Chi's name from the Shang Chi movie. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> so you don't remember the rest of the cast? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're on a podcast for this, and you forgot their name. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Little, um, uh, this is a professional, you know, guys. Just so you know, we're we're professionals here. Oh, we're, professionals for sure. That was, that was kind of like, and I, no, it was worse because I was just watching a movie with the same actress in it. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, uh, so diving back into the series, um, with the two episodes, you know, you saw the death of Armand the third. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think happened there? Who do you think killed him? Because the series is kind of leaning on um, the nephew, Jake. But I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it's the mom. <laughs> I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, like, yep. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the mom. It's yep. just like mainly yep. kind of like some other hints. Because like all the Marvel movies kind of been leaning on the, the female villain. Mm-hmm. And Ooh. I don't think it's going to be the guy because... He's he would be way too obvious, and because she's more connected to Kate, it just makes more sense. That's like a fine. I, I, if they're gonna fight a final boss, it's got to be the mom. I'm I'm sure of it. I also thought she was really. She kind of seemed like an angry person a little bit. Like I don't know, maybe that's just me. But like even as when she was a kid, she was trying to comfort her daughter. She was just she kind of seemed like one of those like tough moms. So I don't know. Maybe just something that adds to her character, but if you're asking me, I think it's the mom who killed him. What do you think, Aaron? You think mom? 
Yeah, I was thinking so too. I don't know why, but after um, we have the time to give and we see um, Kate a bit more grown up, the mom, when she was putting on the coat, I don't know why. I just thought of her as a leader of a cult or something. I don't know why. Or just like a, a secret organization behind the scenes because the, um, the the guy's nephew, I feel like he's involved in some way, but I don't think that he's the one who killed him because remember when him and Kate were fencing and he was able to block that attack that was about to go for his face? I think, I think he has some form of involvement, but I don't think he was the one who killed him. And I just feel like the mom just being the innocent figure person or just the mom who's just trying to move on. I feel like, I feel like there's something more to that. And also the simple fact of, we don't know why in the beginning they had to sell the house. Do we, was it like financial issues or maybe there's like something deeper into that, that we may not know. Maybe she got in with the wrong people or something, but I, like, I think it's the mom. I, I also thought it was interesting how like, when we see her as a little kid, we don't know what happens to the dad and the mom and the dad were gone when she was calling the house. And then the yeah. mom only shows up and then you're just like, what happened to the dad? Like, where did, where did he just, did he just die? Like, and we don't really get a clarification. We, I mean, we see him like at the funeral, but how did he exactly die? Did the alien really just shoot him? I just yeah, because she was like she was yelling down the hallways and no one answered her. Yeah, which nobody. I the mom she was just screaming sus. in the house. I'm telling you, the mom is sus. Like, yeah, no, she was wearing a red dress. Like, how evil do you get? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, red dresses lead to evil. I yeah. think it's weird that she was like. Okay, we saw like how they were doing like the bidding, the kind of like the evil rich people kind of doing some mysterious things. And I was just thinking, well, you know what? Like, how, how did the mom, you know, get along all those years when the dad was gone? Like, what did, was she doing? You know, I mean, and they, it seemed like before the dad was kind of like the biggest like like person for the money. At least how they look made it look in the, when she was a kid. So then, like, the mom just kind of looked like she was having fun with her daughter. She kind of looked like the stay-at-home mom. Then all of a sudden, we get time skip. She's wearing a red dress, knows all <laughs> these rich people. It's, it's well, she owns hard. a business. She's it, too sus. It's too well, sus. yeah, she owns a security business, so <laughs> she made that. But, like, so that explains where her wealth came from. But Oh, yeah, that's true. How'd she get started? Did she get started through, like, you know, insurance from the Avengers thing? Like, do you have insurance for aliens before you know aliens are real? Like, we don't know. She's a member. <laughs> She's a member of Hydra. Just a plot twist. Oh yeah. my gosh! I mean, well, let's look at all the sus things that she has, though. Um, one. Wait, what was the first? One? Yeah, one. She's pretty agile for being as old as she is. Like, you know, she was catching all the food in her mouth. Like, my mom can't do that for sure. Um, two. When she's talking to Armand, um, he's talking. To, he refers that she has powerful friends and she yeah. seems super calm about him. Like she's almost annoyed, not yeah. really like threatened. Mm -hmm. So that's something kind of suspicious. Um, she seems super, I can't say that word. Um, you know, cool, like laid back, like really chill. Yeah. So I don't know. There's a lot. Also, didn't Kate mention something about she didn't she have the didn't she comment like what is with all the swords, mom? I feel like, I feel like that might lead to something. I, I don't know. Just, I, I don't know. Just it kind of gave me some weird vibes when she just mentioned that. When I when I really think about it, I think the biggest hint that the mom is sus is that when Kate went up to her mom and said, "I give me a bow," the mom just let her. <laughs> what type of mom is like? Oh snap! My daughter's about to be a fighter unless she had some history. That is sus. That is so sus. Like no yeah. mom is gonna be like, oh yeah, you know, your dad just died. You want a bow? Yeah, I got you, daughter. Yeah. Well, she started off like poor, like because you know she kind of referred to when she was talking to Kate and acting all sassy, and yeah. was like, um, something about being poor, like, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, just being poor and stuff like that.
So she's been poor and she's been like in the gutter. So how'd she meet her rich husband? Mm-hmm. Like with that class divide. Yeah. Yes. We have become the detectives of the Marvel Universe. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then we'll fast play over to another topic. Um, the re- the jumpsuit gang or whatever, right? You think Bro. they're kind of? I don't know. I find them kind of annoying. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> they're so funny. <laughs> they were like the worst, like villains <laughs> ever. <laughs> like I was just thinking, like all the like they're probably like the worst mob villains. Like we've had some pretty serious random bad guys in the Marvel Universe, and these guys are just like... And they just kept showing up. Like, I kind of get what you mean by being annoying, because they just, like, they get beat up so bad, and then all of a sudden, they're just back at it again, saying random weird liners and beating up people. I mean, I'm like, wow, these are some committed mob bosses right here. These are... Don't mess with these guys. Yeah. Uh, For me, I would agree with both of you. Every time they were talking, they were explaining stuff. And like he was, bro, bro, bro. And then I'm just sitting there like, what, what are you guys talking about? You can't hit my bro like that. And then I'm just like, <laughs> was it, was it even a hawk. I was like, it's, it's just you get like, oh, those guys again? And it's like, yeah. I'm just like, what? I was like, Hawkeye, this man just fought aliens. He's fought gods. He he helped defeat Thanos. And then he's like, now I have to fight a, a jumpsuit street game who keeps just saying bro all the time. Like, it's the new hip. <laughs> we found you, Hawkeye, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like they, yeah. they, they started being bad guys like yesterday or something. <laughs> so Dude, funny. they're like the fifth grade bullies. We're yeah. like, you know what? <laughs> I can do whatever I want because I'm in fifth grade and you're in first grade. And like, oh my goodness. <laughs> like, that reminds me of like when I was in first grade and there was this fifth grader, like he took my little beanie boo. I don't know why I brought a beanie boo to school. That was like social suicide. But um, <laughs> like, they would just be like, bro, you have a beanie boo? Let me have it. And they're like throwing it all around. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah, they're yeah. fifth graders. I could I could see that like connection right there. They, I definitely thought they were some weird bullies. Probably like watch football games every Sunday. <laughs> like probably getting hanging out, vibing. Maybe they play 2K. I don't know. That's what it seems like. They don't seem like serious. Like this this seems like a side job. Like this is like them. <laughs> Like, these are a bunch of dudes that live ne- near each other, and they're like, guys, let's be a mob gang as a hobby. That's how <laughs> I do it. Yeah. So what do you think of the mute lady? You know, she seemed to really read lips. Oh, yeah. She was interesting. Mm-hmm. She was. Yeah, for me, I think it could be an interesting concept and also a parallel because in the first episode, it's shown that Hawkeye is a little bit deaf in deaf at least in one ear because I believe I believe in the comics he was also somewhat deaf and he had to wear earring aids which I, I think is cool which adds another form of realism because you know the the guys with the the guys with the iron suit the guy with the unbreakable shield the guy who's essentially a god that they're fine but what what do you do with the rest of them and it the series was kind of showing that after everything they've been through, certain scars just don't heal. And he still has to work through certain things. But I think it was like an interesting parallel that, you know, he's deaf in one ear and she's just completely deaf. I think it was an interesting parallel between the two of them. I don't think she's going to be like, at least because like, and I think this is the, the only problem with the mob bosses too. She doesn't seem like a serious villain because of how silly the mob guys are. So, like, I wasn't even intimidated with her. And then, like, especially her introduction, like, she's listening to some type of music. And then one of the mob bosses is like, oh, someone's here for you, like, in a funny way. And then she just stands there. And it kind of was just funny. Like, I don't But, I mean, I think she's really interesting. But, like, I don't know if she's going to be, like, 
I feel like she's going to be sort of like a silly boss or not a huge enemy, but I'm not sure. See, I don't believe she's the main villain. I feel like she'll be a secondary villain. Then maybe at the end of the series, the mom will just walk out of the shadows. Hello, Kate. Like, mom? <laughs> I, just, I, I don't think she's the main big bad of the series. Maybe like a secondary. Yeah. You guys hoping to see Kingpin? Yes. I Yes, I, I desperately want to see Kingpin. <sighs> That's going to be cool. If I would they, lose my mind. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yes. Yes. We're running low on time right now, but um, what do you guys overthink, overall think about the series? Like, how is it going to compare to the other Marvel series? Like, what if Loki, Captain America, and the Winter Soldier? All oh, that stuff. For me, um, I really enjoy it right now. Like, the way it's going. Um if it i mean it's just kind of fun and it's a nice pace i think they should make like they just put all the marvel avengers in a really interest well they put hawkeye in an interesting place because it was just like let's do a christmas special kate and hawkeye and they're gonna stop some bad guys like i think it's really simple and i think it's gonna be effective if they keep doing the if it keeps going the way it's going right now i think it's 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 also I liked compared to like at least all the other series we've got. It's a lot more fast paced. They get you right into it, and I think that's another thing that's really cool. Not that I don't like it, like fat low, like like a, a small pace. Not that I don't like those, but this was kind of nice. Like it just got me into the story. So as of now, I I like where it's going. Aaron. Yes, for me, I, I maybe like put it on like no, number four because um, the, the series is still going on, so my opinion could change. But I think WandaVision for me is still like my number one favorite just because I feel like with with the rest, like with Hawkeye and the – not not – yeah, with the Hawkeye series, um, the Winter Soldier and Falcon – the plot was laid out. There were still twists and turns, but I think I liked WandaVision the most is because we didn't really know what was happening. Like we had to slowly unravel the mysteries and there were theories and we were speculating. And, you know, I thought Mephisto was going to be there and I thought the X-Men universe was going to be connected and Hugh Jackman was going to arrive, but that, that didn't happen. But I enjoyed WandaVision because of, the mystery that held was still being a Marvel show. And Loki, Loki was just fun to me, but I, I still enjoy Hawkeye and we will just see how it goes. And I'm still enjoying it. Yeah, for sure. Um, personally for me, Loki's still like the best show I've seen, mm -hmm. like by far, like introduction wise and just series wise. But as the introduction is, this is not bad. Like I like it. Um, I think I'd probably rank it like second because of like comedy wise. Yeah. Um, I liked it better than like the What If and the uh, WandaVision and the Captain America like intros. It kind of related mm -hmm. to um, Captain America Falcon. I call it Captain America Falcon because that's what they named it at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Not because I'm definitely forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Alrighty. Uh, any closing thoughts, guys? No, I'm excited to watch the rest of the episodes what they're coming out with for Hawkeye. For sure, for sure. Uh, thank you, everybody, for logging on to uh, this episode. We're going to be coming out with these every week until the end of the series. Um, so Hawkeye is on Disney+. Plus. Follow us on Instagram at, at the Con Kids. Uh, we have a TikTok now. Um, bear with me. It's terrible right now. I'm working on it <laughs> um, at the Con Kids. And <laughs> I'm about to make fun, be made fun of for this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, log on to us. The series on Disney Plus comes out every Wednesday. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. So thank you and see you next time. Bye.